Hi everybody, it's Chris with GFY Farms. We took a trip out to Hendrix Farms in Centerview, Missouri. We, uh, they grow some great vegetables and uh, we, we put, a, put some of those in. We kind of loaded up. We got tomatoes and just a few different things. <laughs> now, do you guys have a name for your farm? It's just Hendrix Farm. Hendrix Farm, and yep. you are? I'm Jamie Hendricks and my husband is Joe Hendricks. And he's just walking around yeah, right now working. He's, he's actually <laughs> getting ready to plant tomato plants. Oh, okay. So out here in the fenced gardens. So how long have you been here now? We moved in here the fall of 2017 uh -huh. from the Kansas City metro area. But when we got here, there was really nothing here except for just the buildings. This was just all mowed. So we built the high tunnel the first year we were here. We developed the gardens and and then you were doing farmer's market we did cut the lease. flowers, right? Yep. We started in the Lee Summers farmer, Farmer's Market five years. So, like, we moved here in the fall, and that spring we were accepted in the farmer's market. So, like, we were just getting started. So, we sold <laughs> a lot of, like, uh, plants. We planted tomatoes. We sold tomatoes and veg and herbs and plants. And then we kind of transitioned into the cut flowers. We've done the cut flowers basically for the last three years. And so... That was really fun and I loved it. So this year is a little different. We're still doing the cut flowers, but because we're selling from the farm, I planted a lot more plants than I normally do. Not only for us to have, but to sell. And then we're uh, growing more veg this year and more herbs. Yeah, I saw the herbs. I'm interested in some yeah. of those too. Yeah. So as you guys know, because Chris said it on one of our last videos, we are really behind on planting. So I'm here to get tomatoes and herbs and I don't know what else. It depends what else. All we right. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still planting too. And you know, like I did a Facebook post and I said, it's not too late. You know, I mean, you can still plant. Yeah, I just so. did a bunch yesterday, got some things ready. So I'm here looking for my plants. So what do you have available for me? All right, well, <laughs> I'll take you in here. So normally on Saturdays, we put everything in the shop and it looks all pretty. And we have cute, <laughs> this cute little signs and all of that. Now you guys said you built the high tunnel? Yes. What, did you get any from scratch? Uh, so did you guys build it, builder? You paid for it, or we built it, built you it. Built he built it. it from scratch. Like he bent all of the. Well, he built this too. So he bought the pipe bender. So this is like top rail for um, chain link fence. Hmm. Because the first year we lived here, we had um, turkeys, ducks, and chickens, and we sold eggs. Oh, okay. So that decided kind of you didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah, we kind of transitioned out of that. So, so I am looking for uh, tomatoes for sauce. Tomatoes for sauce. Okay. So I thought you had San Marzano. I do have San Marzano. You have some still left. I do. And I don't know what else you got. <laughs> I've got Romas and San Marzanos, which would be really good like for those. those. And then I've got um, different kinds of cherry tomatoes. If you're interested in any of those, I've got a couple of specialty yellow ones called Honey Bee and Lemon Drop. And then I've got a large red cherry and an old uh, German. Raisin straw, German red cherry tomato. It's one that like people that like to save seeds really uh -huh. love that one. I'm and it's try that. It, it's been a good plant. So when I looked up, uh, Martha Stewart said that San Marzanos were the Ferrari and Prada of canned tomatoes. <laughs> so four or six. Six. Okay. <laughs> do you guys do the thing where you take off the leaves and you plant yep, them up to there? Okay. Up. All right. So I don't need to explain that to you. Call it the toothache plant. The toothache plant, yeah. So what is it? So the toothache plant, I learned about this one whenever um, I did a lot of studying of herbs. And um, look at this one. This one might be easier to see. So it gets this funky little bloom. And if you were to put that in your mouth and chew on it, it's kind of like Pop Rocks. It, <laughs> it will numb your gums like oragel it's like oh, oragel interesting and so that's why they call it toothache plant is it perennial no it's from brazil if i remember right so um it won't take our winters however when these are done blooming they dry out and it's full of seeds so you can save the seeds easy hmm. enough is that an elderberry bush uh, that he know he wanted the elderberries yep here's an elderberry yes elderberries and then we have elderberries here that we sell now the ones that we sell are Bob Gordon's. The ones that we have, we brought with us. Bob Gordon's are actually a lot better. They're the type that um, professional 
uh, growers grow and they have a bigger berry so that like when they start ripening up they get heavy so they fall over and the birds can't get them as easily so. did you want some yeah. <laughs> i knew you wanted the elderberry and i've got two <laughs> different kinds of rosemary this one is called barbecue which it gets a tall thick stem so that you can like use it as a skewer yeah and then I've, I've got them. just the regular. I just want the regular, because okay. I use them. And then I've got some thyme. I've got one lemon thyme. I've got some Thai basil. Well, I should do the thyme, because mine died. Regular? Or... Just regular, regular okay. thyme. And then oregano would be the only other thing if you have it. I do. Somewhere. Yep. <laughs> oh my God, this smells so good. I have chives. No, but I got plenty of chives. My garlic chives came back even after the, I, I put the chickens in the garden because oh, uh -huh. we had squash bugs really bad oh, last yeah. year. So I put the chickens in the garden. I tried to protect the chives with a bucket. They knocked it over, <laughs> ate it to the ground, and now they look better than they I was going to say, they probably look really good. <laughs> they came back really, really good now, so. we got parsley, chamomile. Yeah, that's different. Um, Is there anything else you can think of? Holy basil, Thai basil. I think I'm good with the basil because I just use the one usually. And then these are uh, pollinator plants. So I've got like blanket flower, Gloriosa daisy, Rutecchia, uh, Coreopsis. So we've got a variety of pepper plants. We've got sweet banana, cayenne, poblano, serrano, uh, a Japanese one called shishito, a really funky one called Mad Hatter. That's a sweet pepper. Now I just want to try that because it's called Manhattan. <laughs> it is really cool. I do want a banana pepper. A sweet banana. I do okay. want a sweet banana. Okay. Okay. The peppers are in the high top. Were the and elderberries then... here? Oh, no. yes. Yeah. Oh. How many did you want? Let's do four. Okay. I think I've got four here. All right. Here's sweet bananas. These over yep. here probably look the best. I'll let you choose which one you want. So what she did, I'll show you a picture of them in, when we get inside. I've got a notebook with pictures. Uh-huh. Um, they, she just cut the top off and scooped them out and then put a, like a cream cheese filling in. Oh, yeah. Cut they it. were really, really good. So I think that's said hers gets pretty big. Because I already got six in the ground. We just put those tomatoes in uh, just, I don't know, a week or so ago. Yeah. So we did like tomatoes and then peppers on one side and we interspersed uh, basil in amongst it's the world's smallest tomato plant. <laughs> Do they get much bigger than that? No. No? No. They and will they keep producing if you... They are a determinant. Uh, so they'll go for a certain amount of time and yeah. then they're kind of done. And then these are the... Uh, these are the little micro peppers. <laughs> they're so cute. That's just like a novelty. <laughs> it is. We sold them a lot at the Lee Summit Market. And then we do have like a, a dwarf tomato that's kind of in between this and a patio tomato. So. Yeah. Get it for me. Oh, this is what you were talking about. Yeah. There's the Mad Hatters. Unusually shaped. Light citrus floral, floral taste. Those will be interesting. Do you have room for six more San Marzanos? I could make room. I think I have some six packs of them in the high tunnel. So if you want to take a six pack, I'll give you a six pack. I'll take it. I'll find room for it. Okay. If you don't you have room to put more in, we've put some in. Um, so I will yeah. definitely make room. <laughs> you, don't, you don't really need to fertilize pepper plants, mm -hmm. hardly at all. I'm giving them a shot today because I'm butchering them. Well, you cut the top off because if you do, what happens is it sends the energy down down to the roots and uh, they'll put more uh, roots down and then they start filling out with lots of new growth. And the, you'll produce twice as many peppers as mm -hmm. you would if you don't do that. And then I put a handful of rock phosphate in the hole. Now that I did not know. So, so. <laughs> but uh, when I make a hole, I put a handful, like a, I get a handful of rock phosphate dust. I put it in the hole, put the pepper in, cover it up. Yeah, and I had I'm, heard of topping them, and then the tomatoes are the exact opposite. You take yeah, the leaves off the bottom. Yeah, and I will bury it that deep. So, Good six inches. Yeah, it takes two weeks for it to recover, and around the third week, it just goes insane. I mean, it, it just grows like you gave it steroids. So you're trying to do some medicinal herbs as well? Yes. 
Well, I'll tell you my favorite website and my favorite book. My favorite website is um, learningherbs.com. Have you ever heard of them? Nope. So learningherbs.com is a free website. And then they also have a membership that I joined years ago. Um, that's called Herb Mentor. And it's not that expensive and it's got a boatload of information there. And a lot of the people that contribute and everything to that have been herbalists for a long, long time, like 20, 30 years. Yeah. That's the kind of people I like to learn from. Yeah, learn from the people who know. Yeah. And then I have a book by Rosemary Gladstar and it's called, um, I think it's just called Medicinal Herbs. I can't remember for sure, but it's Rosemary Gladstar. And it's kind of got the basic information in there and she's got like probably three recipes for each herb. And it's a lot of them are things that anybody can grow. Yeah. And so I, she's kind of my go-to person. I really would like to learn more. Um, for some tips on planting the elderberries. Oh, okay, so they will grow in full sun. They will also grow in partial shade. So when you think of elderberries in the wild, generally you will see them kind of at the edge of like other trees. So that's kind of where they naturally, but like these are in full sun and you can see they do fine. Yeah. Um, you can plant them now, just make sure they stayed watered good. Um, and you can see these are starting to bloom. So they bloom in June generally, and then they're gonna fruit in August. And wait till they are, the berries are um, black, black, black. Like when these, these will be like a bunch of little white flowers and then all of those will turn into berries. And so it'll just, it'll be like that big around with berries. Usually what I do is I come out with like a cookie sheet or a bigger cookie sheet. You just go, I just hold it and I have cutters ah. and I just cut and they just drop, or you could drop them into a bucket. And almost like picking grapes. <laughs> yeah, and so what I like to do is I like to let them set for one day before I start taking them off of the branches. Yeah. Some people will say they freeze them. I tried that, and the first few you take off when they're frozen come off really easy, but then as they start thawing out, they're mushy. They, they start getting mushy. Yeah. So I, I think just letting them set for one day and just drying slightly, then you can, some people use a fork or I just, I just use my fingers and just yeah. take oh. them off. Yeah. We actually make like a, for ourselves, we make like a medicinal syrup and we add uh, fresh ginger, cinnamon and cloves and cook it down and then uh, add the honey after it's strained. And we can it. My husband is the canner. So he's <laughs> the one that does all the canning. So I don't remember if he does water bath or pressure. I yeah. don't remember. Um, the other way that we do it is we'll take a gallon jar and put the berries in it with the cinnamon, cloves, and ginger and then cover that with uh, brandy. You're getting, you're getting the constituents from the alcohol soluble constituents and then you add water and then you cook it down later. So you let it stay in that alcohol. So it's almost like a tincture. Yeah. So you let it stay in that alcohol for like six weeks or longer. It doesn't matter, it can be in there a year. Um, and then when you take it out, then my husband adds more water and he cooks it down and he really cooks all the alcohol out of it and then strains it. I'm a little late getting things in because we've done things different, but you can see the larkspur out there. I actually planted those seeds the end of September. Wow. So they get planted in the fall, and then we've got the white plastic down with drip tape underneath it. He's getting ready to plant a row of tomatoes and peppers and stuff in there. Yeah, we'll sell some of the cut herbs this summer, and we'll sell tomatoes and peppers, and then I'll sell like some cut basil and yeah, other herbs that are cut, yeah. Also, but your deer out here and sheep yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, pig, hog. Own goats. And Have you done a hog before? No, but I'm yeah. going to. We just started raising uh, some cooney coonies. We had our yeah. first litter. I just skinned mine because it's easier. Mm -hmm. I, I have butchered a wild hog. Or oh, yeah. Field dressed oh, it. Good. I butchered it all the way. But so I'm, they're difficult to skin. I got this for ten dollars. <laughs> oh wow! The whole thing. Wow. I bid on it on a uh, equip bid auction, and it was in a restaurant in Overland Park. 
and nobody bid against me, not one single person. Nice. So I took it all apart, hauled it home. So the reason I got it so cheap is because it did not have a cooling system, which was okay with me. I didn't want to fiddle with a commercial cooling system. So I installed the CoolBot. Have you seen that? No. Okay, this is, this is the bomb because basically what it does is it fools an air conditioner and okay. keeps it running and it wires up to the thermostat in there. It's really simple to do. And uh, I set this thing through the summer at 43 degrees, and if I'm doing chickens or meat, like you can see I've had stuff hanging out here, mm -hmm. uh, I just turn it down. I can turn it down to 34, whatever I want. So that's, that's awesome. <laughs> Ten dollars, yep. But this cost uh, 1,200 or something. But it was worth it. It's worth every penny. I, I, I love this. So, so tell them how you did for our storage in the wintertime in oh. here. Oh, okay, yeah, I, uh, I have a thermostat, in fact, I think I've already, oh, there it is right there. I just ordered it on Amazon, and you plug it in, and I hooked it up to this radiator heater, and it kept this room at 43 degrees all winter long. Nothing ever froze in here, even when it got really nasty bad. Nothing froze. And we did some trials with uh, potatoes and apples and onions and stuff like that, and had great success. So, because this, literally did not hardly ever even kick on because this is heavily insulated. Mm -hmm. Now we have freezer envy. <laughs> We've been talking about it. We were just saying, we were, she was looking at freezers on Sam's today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the walking, this, this, this won't freeze, but it, it won't freeze. Yeah. It, it will go, like I said, I've had it down to 32 at the floor. And, uh, you know, we just put the chickens on the racks and I had another rack and we rolled it in here. Yeah, let them cool down. Fast, yeah and uh, everything was moved. I had a woman from church here that uh, um, has uh, food service, food service license. Okay. She and I took it together. So she manned the three base stainless steel sink in there and I butchered and had a couple of other people helping me. So things would come in, she'd wash them and uh, finish picking anything off that needed to come off. And the final process was to go into a uh, ice water bath. Mm -hmm. So I did a very, very uh, minor final wash where we basically tried to sterilize it just a tiny bit. So I always wash mine before we bag them up. That's, oh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I'm the one processing them, so I know they're pretty clean. Yeah. But I, I always give I, them a final rinse before we stick them in a bag. I have one of those Weston uh, vacuum sealers because I wore out the other one and I thought of them. And I rebuilt it a couple times and I'm like <laughs> tired of this. So I bought a Weston and we love it. Are we using the heat shrink bags? Yep. That's, is that's that a chamber? No. Um, it's, it's considered a professional or commercial vacuum seal bag. Okay. So it pulls a real hard vacuum and um, I got nothing but good to say about it. And well, I'm glad you stopped by. Well, I appreciate you guys having something other than a Saturday because it is pretty far. I, mean, I want to buy from there, but we're so far away. Yeah. I always like supporting people I know my preference <laughs> yeah I work I still work full-time so but I do work from home so I'm here most of the time and he's here all the time so yeah, I'm st I still work from home from, Dude, uh, nice. I only have to go downtown once a week so oh, nice. it makes it a little bit easier yeah um, and, and he's retired so nice he gets to he gets to have all the so you run the homestead <laughs> eh, <Yes>. sometimes <laughs> oh. he does he does all the hard she does work. a lot he does oh, all the hard work. Right, I do like right. the morning chores because he's not uh, one to get up very early. Yeah. And I am. But yeah. yeah, he does all the hard work. I know. I know. Yeah, Joe's the, he does all the building. Yeah, and the fences the and the building stuff. stuff. And yeah, you know, you know how it is. It's a team effort. So. It is. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed our trip. We'll continue to give updates. So like and subscribe. We appreciate all the support. Thanks, and you guys have a good day.